Hi everybody, sorry about that, but like, um, I'm obviously back again with another video. <laughs> obviously, Raspberry here, and um, you know, I just w was thinking, like, there's a, I don't even know what I was thinking, obviously. You know, if you can't see the side of my room like usual, that's because we got home from MFF like a couple days ago, and I have yet to clean my room from all the stuff I got. And as you can see, I got these little like scale things that from some, from one of the dealers at the dealer's den and also this little hat. Pretty cool, right? <laughs> anyway, but what I was wanting to make in this video was basically like how to be a furry or how to join the furry fandom for anybody that because I know I have gotten a couple of questions of like how to join the furry fandom. Like, do I need a fursona? Do I need a fursuit? Um, do I need art? Which, you know, short term answer to that is no. You don't need art, a fursuit, a fursona, anything like that. You know, yeah. Um, basically, you know, the question is, you know, what I, you know, basically got asked was, do I like anthropomorphic animals? And what is an anthropomorphic animals? Well, it's basically an animal that can talk like a human being, walk like a human being, or, you know, just, yeah, basically an animal with human characteristics. I guess, if that makes any sense. But yeah, um, I just wanted to make this video because I've been getting this question a lot of just how do I join? And it's very simple. Are you a furry? Do you want to be a furry? And if the answer is yes, then congratulations, you're a furry. Video ends right here. Goodbye. <laughs> but anyway, that's not why I'm going to, you know talk about in this video the answer to that is you can just say you're a furry without having hundreds of dollars worth of art or thousands of dollars worth of a fursuit so yeah obviously is you know basically if you just want to be a furry you can just say hey i'm a furry and then boom you're a furry but why and here comes the question of how you can get started in the fandom whether it be <clears throat> whether it be doing your own art or making your own art making your own fursuits making your own bases or whatever just making your own avatars on vr chat because that's a whole new thing that people are doing now ever since vr chat become, became pow not powerful but um <laughs> more widespread but, um, yeah, uh, basically, you know, how to get started in the furry fandom. If you have any artistic ability, whether it be, like, making things, making art, like, paintings, or badges, because paintings you can technically use as, like, a way to make a badge, or, you know, fursuit, if you want to start learning how to do that, like, there are a whole bunch of different types of ways, like, with how YouTube is coming, sorry, with how YouTube is, like, becoming a whole platform, so is TikTok. You can make your own little videos and stuff, like, here on YouTube, I'm obviously making YouTube videos, I'm making TikToks, I'm posting them on my YouTube, and just stuff like that, because you don't necessarily need to be able to draw to be a furry because that's like a common misconception that all furries know how to draw or all furries know how to make fursuits because if that was the case we wouldn't have a business as the furry fandom so yeah that's just the thing you know this stuff that people do in the fandom or just in art world in general that's an actual talent that takes years of practice, which, you know, I can understand when somebody says, hey, can you please not say, oh, I wish I could draw like you, you know, 
because I can see how that can be offensive because art takes time to master. Because if you were to go to one of the popular fursuit makers that have not had a controversy yet, or <laughs> have not had a controversy at all, um, basically, if you were to go back to their very first fursuit, most likely it's not going to be the best of quality. It's most likely going to be mid or low quality. And, you know, yeah, guess what? Everybody starts somewhere. Because guess what? The very first fursuit makers in the fandom, they didn't even know. They, they didn't have YouTube. They didn't have these big old videos to show you how to make a foam head fursuit. They, they had to make it out of their own, with their own mind. And that's how the furry fandom started back in the 80s. <laughs> Yeah, in the 80s. So, yeah, um, it's just crazy how, you know, people are so creative in the furry fandom. And, you know, it's just crazy. <laughs> and, you know, that's one way to, like, get started in the furry fandom is, like, either learning how to make fursuits, learning how to draw, learning how to make badges... Learning how anything, you know, in the furry fandom. You can even just do a simple little video of you in your fursuit or fursuit unboxing video. You know, if you happen to get enough money for a fursuit, go ahead, do it. Because I've seen fursuit videos literally, or fursuit unboxing videos, get like a good couple hundred views. And, you know, boom, the person's got a couple followers and just stuff like that. And it's actually, like, really cool to see, like, new creators and new st people who have these really cool fursuits and stuff like that. And it's just really cool. I love it. I I love, like, you know, how the furry fandom is a way to express ourselves, which, you know, is another thing about the furry fandom is, you like, how I use the furry fandom is a way to, like, express who I am as a person because I can't just go up to someone and talk to them for like hours and hours or whatever not not literally but you know it's just like but I can just sit here for like 10 minutes 15 minutes and then make a video about how raspberry has helped me socially like so much like I cannot tell you right now that when I first got Raspberry, or when I first joined the fandom, that I would have, like, almost 4,000 subscribers on YouTube. You know, and however many followers on TikTok right now. But yeah, and I can never tell you right now that if you were to go back to me in 2016, just joining the fandom, and say, hey, you're gonna have a decent following, I would not believe you because... You know, my, my social anxiety back then was horrible. Horrible. I could never go up to someone and say, Oh my gosh, your your fursuit is so cute. You know, who made it? You know, yeah. It's just because, like, I couldn't do it back then. How bad my mental state and my anxiety was back then, I just couldn't do it. And then obviously, you know, there's just so much stuff. Yeah, and then obviously I had Raspberry, who I put on, you know, make these goofy little TikToks, make the YouTube videos, the YouTube shorts and Instagram reels and stuff, post on First Soup Friday, and then obviously I have definitely grown as a person. I can't say this for everybody, obviously, but I will say for myself personally, the furry fandom has helped me so much with the expressing of who I am as a person and who knows who else it could help like mentally you know because i will 100 percent say the furry fandom has helped me mentally grow like in so many ways so yeah it's not it's obviously not for everybody the furry fandom is not for everybody i will 100 percent say that the furry fandom's weird there's no way you're gonna Look at the furry TikToks and say that is what it's normal in society. Because it's not. You know, at MF Midwest Fur Fest, 
there was like this other little event going on of sports people and I just thought that was kind of funny because they were all walking around and seeing all these people in these giant mascot costumes and they're just like what's going on? I've actually heard a couple people say like it was kind of like kind of weird because it is weird because you don't expect to run around in this custom thousand do like couple thousands of dollars worth of mascot whatever and just be perceived as like normal you know whatever it even is normal but that's just the thing you know and they're and they're obviously we're like kids in that fan not the fandom but like they're obviously kids that were in that sports event that actually came out and just like thought it was really cool and stuff which that's another thing i've actually seen the furry fandom actually help little like help pe kids you know like see like see something magical and stuff because like i just remember when you know that one time when we had the um people coming in from from that one like from i don't even remember where they were coming in from but they were refugees and there's a whole bunch of kids coming into a hotel and you know there are also furries there at the convention and the kids absolutely loved it because you know there are all these gigantic cartoon mascot costumes that just like and they just like loved it and it's amazing and it was so unexpected which that that's that's the joy of the furry fandom people who don't even know what it is coming into like a hot spot where it is where it's happening and then they see it and they're like oh my gosh you know it's amazing and the amount of charities that the furry fandom does like midwest fur fest did a charity for you know like basically dogs who have you know like a cancer and stuff and just so dogs can like live a little bit of fun and stuff and there were like little dogs that they brought in for the charity and the dog that represented the chari charity and stuff. And like you would be surprised at how much the furry fandom has helped some people escape from like whatever they're going through. Whatever tragic event that they're going through. And the furry fandom has helped them kind of like just escape it for a little bit and like have a little bit of fun and that's why i don't let the trolls get to me like i will obviously you know antagonize the trolls a little bit to like comment and stuff i don't care because you know i see as a person that's inside the fandom obviously i see how it helps people and it's an amazing community to an extent obviously you know, you have those people that are not so great in the fandom, and it's obviously, like, yeah, you, you're, you're gonna get them in every fandom, no matter what. You have it in society that's not in the furry fandom, that's not in the brony fandom, that's not in the Five Nights at Freddy's fandom, and whatnot, and whatnot. It's, it's everywhere. You cannot escape the horrible people of this world. So, the fact that, you know... Yeah, I'm not going to stop making TikToks just because some random person commented something ne something negative. Like, okay, dude, you know, you can just say what you want to. I'm just going to, like, ignore you anyway. And it's just, like, yeah. Okay, that's enough about, like, all that stuff, you know. And so we were just talking about, like, what the fandom does, what you could do. And stuff like that. So, yeah. And what else? I don't even know what else I was going to say. Because I just went on that whole entire rant. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just like the fandom is a whole thing. Whole thing that, like, you know. You can do almost anything that you want. And, you know, and just have a fun time. That's what the fandom's supposed to be about, is just having a fun time. So, yeah. Um, anyway, though. Hope you guys, like, I'm just gonna cut this video short, because I don't even know what else I was about to say. But, uh, yeah, if you watched this far into the video, comment down below, like, 
comment, <laughs> share, subscribe, you know. And, you know, hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Yeah. <laughs> Bye, guys.